All right. What a race. Tim Haraney coming to a sick from Silverstone while you're not actually at the racetrack anymore. You're in your pajamas, which I'm really disappointed you don't have race car pajamas, Tim. No, um, man. I, I got the, yeah. the, first of all, bad case allergies. Second of all, it's like my uh, Kingston. What the hell do I have on here? Kingston, Kingston K-Town, uh, Olympic triathlon, third place. Oh, two thousand eight third in a triathlon? Oh, yeah. 2018. What? Yeah, man. I almost had, I, uh, I think, I try to remember how many minutes. So back when I was uh, training for racing and stuff, uh, I think, well, I tried to get my, uh, well, I tried to get a pro card um, okay. in triathlon, like so an Ironman distance. So, but I did the half Ironman uh, in Michigan. And I think I came up like 12 or it was like 12 or 15 minutes shy of getting my pro card. So, okay. I was close. I was close. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, that's, that's amazing, Tim. Good for you. Yeah, man. Back in the day, 30 pounds ago. That's what it feels <laughs> like 30 pounds ago. <laughs> and I started doing this and I just put weight on and now yeah, I'm trying to get it off. It's funny what happens when you're working 24 seven, man. That's, uh, that is what yeah. happens. <laughs> hey, so. Adam, ahead, first of all, we, 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 uh, I was in the paddock. I gotta, I gotta, uh, shout this listener out because I was talking to, uh, to someone from one of the teams in the paddock and this gentleman comes out of nowhere, grabs my hand, shakes it and is like, I love nailing the apex. And I'm like, right on. Wow. Like, Thank you so much. Across the, across the ocean. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Eh? In the paddock. Cool. In the paddock, too. Yeah, in man. the paddock. Well, there's somebody with some cash, too. Yeah, Unless they're a member right. of the team. Was it was it Toto or Christian or who was it? No, I'm not too sure. I didn't catch the guy's name. I felt bad because um, I was like I was t I was in a deep conversation with some guys from another team, and uh, yeah, I, did, I felt bad. I didn't get the guy's name. Also hey, well, whatever. That's but anyways. Still if really you're nice. listening right now, thank you so much. That's very cool, Tim. Very very cool. Um, yeah. and it was an absolute classic of a race. Unbelievable yeah, by all standards, and not something that I think. Not that we. We would expect that that there wouldn't be a Mercedes up there, but that we got two Mercedes wins in a row uh, is pretty phenomenal for them, and they are all the way back. So let's let's talk about Lewis Hamilton's 104th win, 150th podium with Mercedes, and 199th career podium. Lewis Hamilton, legend, and he has his last, well, his new last win with Mercedes because this doesn't have to be his last win. That's true. I think. Adam, they could probably get more by how things are, are looking down there now, uh, especially this weekend, you know, mm -hmm. coming into a track that was, uh, you know, most most likely going to suit the likes of like Red Bull and McLaren. And I thought coming into this one, Adam, they were going to be just a little further out in the distance. And then you were going to have that sort of Mercedes Ferrari sort of battle in between. And you're mm -hmm. going to have that separation. But uh, they were they were right on pace. They were this was um, this is a legit win. This isn't like Austria where it was kind of handed to them. This is a legit win. They actually had had actual pace in the last twelve laps of this thing. Were flat out, just flat out racing. It was awesome. I haven't seen a race this good. Uh, I don't know, man. The story around it for sure. But just the fact that like you had three cars that were just going at it the last 12 laps, just rattling off like fastest lap, fastest lap, trading that back and forth and trading personal bests. And it was incredible. I think for for Lewis, like to get this win, smart job of uh, of of just making that soft tire last as long as he did yeah. and i think that goes back to though adam like where how he sets the car up like gets it ready for the race weekend just really um looking deep into the weekend by him and the team and having a consideration for uh the conditions they may be facing uh, and really taking that into consideration and that that little tiny adjustment to the car somewhere could possibly have been what you know, prevented him from getting pole position. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, he was, uh, 
yeah, man, he was fantastic. Like he was great. You could see it as soon as you started to get that inclement weather and then the, the damp and the drying track and you saw him fighting back. And I was just like, Oh wow. Like this is like this vintage is, Lewis. Yeah. But it's like, it was just like, this is, these are his conditions. You know, yeah. this is where, well, where he's you, you can't be a good British driver and not drive in the rain. So 100%. that, you know, it always favors the Brits. Although I got to give uh, Max a little credit here too. He's great in yeah. the rain. Uh, mm-hmm. Fernando's always great in the rain. Uh, you know, the best drivers tend to be, and I, and I look at the, um, I look at the overall picture, you know, Lewis winning at his home Grand Prix, uh, we, you know, with the team all there, right? Like that's where the factory is. Yep. Um, it's, it's kind of an, a, it's kind of a, an iconic moment, I think in his career that I think maybe perhaps was a little unexpected because, you know, of the way he won because of how long it's been since he did win 945 days. It was Saudi Arabia in 2021. The last time he won, they were talking about something that uh, really and truly, you know, I I think I asked you this at the beginning of the season, are we going to see one more Lewis Hamilton win in a Mercedes? And I think at the time you were kind of lukewarm on it. Rightfully so the car didn't look good. No, didn't. It was, it was absolute. It was garbage at the start of the season and it took them so long to, figure it out. It was just like a eureka moment from James Allison that really set this whole thing in motion coming into Canada. It was like the smallest of changes and it just turned around the entire car. I mean, obviously with the new front wing and uh, that new front suspension that they started with, you know, really changed a lot for them and just where they have the car set up and how high from the ground they have it. And just these little tiny things that, you know, the team, you know, weren't really paying too much attention to until finally they figured it out and they were like, oh, this is like a eureka moment. And it, mm-hmm. it, and it literally was. And it turned the entire car around for them. Like, that's what, you know, you and I have been talking about all season. It was just trying to find a sweet spot with the regulation and, and your car. And you can you can literally turn your season around like at the snap of your fingers. Or if you get the the upgrades wrong, the updates, then you can easily go backwards. Like, yes, so quickly with this regulations are so sensitive, but I, I think Adam w- with all this, with, with Lewis, you know, you br- bring up 2021, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sitting down and talking to him, you know, afterwards. And you did, you uh, actually get to talk to him. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Got to speak with him um, in the press conference. So asked him about like where this win like ranked for him, considering what the start of his season was like. And then also factoring in that this was his last go around with the team before he moves on. Mm-hmm. And he, he struggled to answer it for a bit. Like, he, you know, he basically said to me, like, like, you know, me, he's like, I, he's like, I don't have the greatest memory. And I started laughing. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're being a little hard on yourself there. <laughs> he's like, uh, he basically had said that this is right up there. He's like, this is one of the greatest wins of his career. Like it's, he he man he got close to being like this was the greatest but it it was up there he said so uh i think from 2021 adam and everything that went down how that season ended and then you get into 2022 and the regulation change and the team shows up with just a, a, the car is just not good right it's a disaster and i think for him he basically was just talking about like mental, like the psychological scars, like left yeah. from what happened in 2021 and trying to like get past that and trying to think like, am I ever going to win again? Mm-hmm. And like, just basically distilling it down to things that you and I uh, think about all the time. Like, or if we're, we're having a rough day or that's something, or we're thinking about this thing's not going to go right for me, or I'm never going to get this right. Or this thing's never going to come to me or whatever. And he just basically, it was so relatable in that moment mm-hmm. um, that, you know, you were kind of just like, yeah, I get that. Like, I, I totally feel what he's, what he's saying. Cause he was in a rut and he's been in a rut for two years now. And he thought he was going to be in another rut. He thought that this was going to be a throwaway season again. And I think for, for him, he was, it was just trying to get out of bed every morning and find a reason to like keep, sort of fighting with this thing and keep pushing forward with it. And those are, those are things he talked about. It was pretty, you get pretty deep. It was a good, uh, it was a good half an hour we had with him. 
Well, I, I bet, you know, you can see why he would be so emotional. Like, you can see why he was on the radio being so emotional. Because, you know, uh, I remember after the the Max Lewis Abu Dhabi infamous, you know, Nicholas Latifi crash leads to rules, in my opinion, being improperly applied. Um, you know, not Max's fault, not Lewis's fault, but Michael Massey's fault. Um, you know, I think when I look at what it would have taken him, and, and you know, it was a while before he got back to even posting on social media, like I'm back, I'm ready to do this. Not having the car to come back that next season really stunk. Oh. You know, it really, it really sucked. And I, and, and <laughs> you can see why this off season, he was finally like, okay, listen, I've given Mercedes the last two years. Yeah. You've not given me the chance to win. Yeah. And now I, I, I want to go to Ferrari and have a chance oh, to man. win. Now, listen, there, there were some people after the race that were like, oh, maybe he regrets that. I don't think so. But I would say it's nice for him to get a little bit of redemption back. Dude, right? I, that, that just brought up a big memory. I remember 2022. So we're coming into that new regulation. Mm -hmm. I was in Vancouver uh, and I was doing a Zoom call with Lewis. And I want to say it was February we were doing it. And it was the first time he had like spoken since uh, 2021, uh, since Abu Dhabi. Okay. And I remember he was just saying like if, you know, people I can't remember the correct quote, but it was like it was pretty punchy. Like it was kind of like one of those things, well, if you thought you saw me on my best then, you know, wait till you see me kind of now kind of thing and I was like, "Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go." And then I mean, you see the car and you're like, "Oh my god, that car. I mean, it looks incredible. Zero side pods. Have they like unlocked something that nobody else has? Yep. Is this going to be a Mercedes runaway?" Like what it, and then it just it just, they just fall flat on their face, like the yep. whole team does. And I remember I always remember that quote from him because he was so like geared up and G'd up for that season and like he had every right to be for sure. And then that happened. And I remember we were about six months into the season and I just kept like that, that interview just kept playing in the back of my head. And I was just like, man, this poor guy, like, I hope he gets a win this season. Like it was just, you're always like, you're always like gunning, gunning for him to like, get, get a great result, get the get, And it just kept, it was like a snowball. It just kept going downhill and picking up steam. And, and that's what I talk about in this podcast. Sometimes Adam, when it's like for a driver, when things start going wrong, it's like, it, it goes wrong for a while. It goes wrong for a for while. while. And it's yeah. like these things just pick up steam and it takes a big result uh, to break the cycle. But then it takes another, like it takes another good result to really get over that, that hurdle. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, looking, looking forward into the season, like I don't see why like Lewis can't get another win anywhere else. Like that, this is a competitive car now and same with George Russell. I mean, it sucks for what happened to him today with the uh, yeah. water leak issue that he had. I mean, that's why he was going so slow at the start of the, uh, sorry, a few laps into the race and he was having all these engine problems. He can't fry the engine. So they had to bring him in. So if the water pump's not working. Then there's no way to cool the engine and you can't lose that engine. So, I mean, I, that sucks for George. Like he was, he was on it all weekend, but uh, regardless, going back to Lewis, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things, man, seeing like a great athlete, you know, down and out and then mm -hmm. see them sort of like fight back is really a remarkable story. Well, and it's, it's frustrating because it was no fault of his own, right? Like there's not much he could do. I can remember him like barely being able to get out of that car because it was porpoising so much. You remember oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. So like, so, so then, you know, um, obviously George, George had a great weekend, except the car failed him, right? Like he was in, he was, I know he had just been passed a couple of times, but I feel like he could have made those places up. Um, you know, we got to talk about McLaren. Mm -hmm. And a three, four finish any weekend, most teams would be happy with, mm -hmm. but McLaren probably should have been one, two or one, three today. And, uh, I've got some thoughts on it, but where do you think it went wrong for them? Did they go don't wrong just, at stop one or did they go wrong at stop let, two? Don't we just let you go, Adam? No, I want, I want to hear a real <laughs> take on this because did it, did it start? Because to me, it could have gone wrong, I think, at, start number, at, at stop number one. Um, I think so, too. Like, I think not double – well, 
yeah, leaving leaving Oscar out. Uh, what a wet, huge on on the slip. I mean, I know you have to prioritize, and Lando obviously is a priority. I think for Oscar though, I think he needs to start being a little more vocal and pushy with the team okay. when it comes to like things that he wants, because you know I. He had said something at the end of the race to 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 us, like it was kind of like I I should have pushed them to double stack us, sort of deal. And I'm, and I'm thinking like you, you definitely should have pushed them to double stack you. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's a hundred percent accurate. And I thought they were going to like when we saw uh, Mercedes do the double stack. I was like, yeah, McLaren's got to do it. And nope. And I'm like, oh my god, like that's a huge. You just took one of your drivers out of the race, like essentially right. out of out of contention for victory. You, you literally just took one of them out of it. Clearly, mm-hmm. I thought that was uh, such a massive, uh, yeah, just a massive face plant by them in that moment. Like it, it. it uh, I, I know they're they're not big on like double stacking and doing things of that nature, but honestly, man, it, it's it's like you and I. It's, spoken about like you're at the front of the field now like you have to once you get to the front you have to start doing things a little differently you have to be aggressive uh with your strategy and you look at red bull like i mean max throws on a set of hard tires like that that's yep. not a move where it's like these are gonna be great it's one of these moves that it's like we're gonna roll the dice on this and then we're gonna get max to push these tires like hell. Hopefully they yeah. come into the window and then he's going to take off like gangbusters. And sure enough, that's what happened, right? But they were aggressive in the strategy and they followed through with it. And I think for McLaren, when you take a look at like Land, like Lando had another set of uh, mediums left. Fresh like, mediums. Yeah, like, like those were the time. Every driver started the race on mediums. There's a reason why he started on the mediums because they're so strong. Mm-hmm. I think... For this race, it probably went medium, hard, soft. Like that was the strength of tire. And he had a set of mediums left. I now look, I think Lewis and Mercedes, the like the undercut towards the end of the race, jumping onto that soft tire, that's mm-hmm. a really smart strategy from them. Like, granted, they didn't have any freaking tires left. To begin with, yeah. yeah. But like that was a smart move by them because McLaren basically saw Lewis on the softs and were like, okay, well, if Lewis is doing it, then we're going to do it. And Lewis just made the tire work because of the setup on the car and how he was driving. Where for Lando, that's not how the car was like operating for him. He yes. needed to be forceful with what he wanted. Like he should have just said, like, give me the medium. Like I want the medium. You put it on the car. Like that's what as, I want. As soon so, as it happened to him, I was like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. Oh, they, I I think like as soon as they, he came out of the pit lane, I'm like, this is a problem. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's slow stop, right? Yeah. I mean that that was an issue, but also like you could have brought him in earlier. Like he could have come in like a lap sooner. And on top of all of that, you send him back out on a set of softs that d- he had no chance in hell of those things even lasting. You could see them going off immediately. Well, you should have been aggressive with what you had mm-hmm. that was a smart option and let him go and do his thing. Like let the driver do his thing. Like don't, and that's another issue. Don't get me started with the data and the engineering. You know, sometimes you, man, you just got to let the drivers just go and do their thing and leave them yep. the F alone. Like that's what you got to do. So I, McLaren definitely threw one away today. Uh, and for me, Adam, I mean, it, it's good that we're saying that because they're like at the front fighting Mm -hmm. and fighting for race victories. Um, And the team has been super impressive to get the car to where it is. And there's been a ton of hard work put into it, but you know, now's like winning time. Like this is, this is it. You can see Lando frustrated, man. Like he was in the press conference room with us alone. No one with him because the drivers were down in the media pen. We were waiting for everybody because we had to wait to start the press conference. Mm -hmm. And Lando came up by himself and he was sitting on the couch on his own. And you could just see how like pissed off this guy was. And like, he has every right to be upset, man. Like he has every right to be pissed. 
I mean, some people were calling him like a brat and all this stuff. I'm like, give me a break. I'm like, a brat. This is, yeah. Like, really? Give me a break. Like this guy wants to win. Like, yeah. Like that, that's all there is to it. Like this, that, that's the sign of a uh, guy who really wants to win. And I think Adam, for him, it's a little bit of patience. It's going to come, but like, man, like I'm thinking about constructors now and drivers. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, you could have had like a McLaren one two. Yep. And you know, it's, it's I mean, not there it, now, like uh, yeah, and and instead of being eight or nine points behind Ferrari, which they are, it's an improvement. They could have been three or four points up on Ferrari. They should have a driver in second, which they do, and they should have a team in second, which they don't. And that is down to what happened on the pit wall. And I think for me, Tim, the frustration is muted by the fact that I look at Red Bull and I look at Mercedes and I go, these are closer teams. These are teams that have been there. Now, as much as it's been three years since Mercedes won the driver's championship last, the reality of the situation is most of that staff is still the same. And, or if, if, you know, if, if some of the people on the ground floors are the same, the executive level is pretty much the same, right? You got a lot of championship people there. Uh, Red Bull, I mean, God, their entire team's championship, they just won one, right? McLaren hasn't won a championship since 2008. And to win, to win, you need uh, you need more than just the drivers, obviously. And you need people who can understand how to win under pressure. I think the pit wall at McLaren lost them the race today. And if you go back and you listen to the the radio signals, they're debating back and forth what tire tire they need to go with. And the reality is that Lando is learning, okay, I know when I know when I need to make a call because they can't make one because they just don't know. Mm-hmm. And they need to understand that it's not fair to put Lando in that position. Mm-hmm. You what you are the one with the data. You are the one who understands who's doing well on what tire. You understand that even at a British Grand Prix where the temperatures are cool, for some reason a hard tire is reacting well to the track. Why is a hard try? Why is that happening? Hard tire in the rain, just off the rain, and a little bit of sunshine, and all of a sudden it's reacting. Okay, so Max is doing really well on the hard tire. Why would we immediately go to the soft? Because all he's going to have to do is babysit that the rest of the way. He's not going to be able to actually fire that car up and go as aggressively as he should. And you saw the results. Uh, it's not like they hadn't had data on that on the on the medium tire. You saw the results from Oscar. Had that race gone on five more laps, it would have been Max and Oscar one and two. And, oh, and yeah. it would have been close uh, to that. Yeah, they would have been, for sure. Yeah. I mean, they were flying, yeah. both of them. And I just look at the situation and I go, that is a team that does not, does not know how to win yet. And you have to lose to learn how to know how to win. But I think we got to, at some point, we got to get tired of second and third place here. And I think today was that day. Like it was great two weeks ago when Lando won and everybody was thrilled for him. You know, last week, McLaren put in a good showing. Uh, I think Oscar probably wanted to finish a little bit higher. It is time for, I think you're right about Oscar being a little bit more aggressive. I think it's time for Lando to, and we call this in in corporate, managing up. You manage up. I know what my team's strengths and weaknesses are. And I know when when they're flailing around that I need to make a call. And I don't think Lewis Hamilton would have any issue making a call. And he knows his team that well. I know Max Verstappen knows his team. Um, This was a... Unforced error, you can survive it once, but you can't do this again. Mm-hmm. And this is cool. the British Grand Prix. You should have won. You should have won. Man, it's like, it's almost like uh, it's almost kind of like Canada, right? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. if Lando had have instead of carrying on, forced to force the issue and just pitted right away, yeah, he would have caught the team out by surprise. Yeah, they would have been able to like make it up. And he wouldn't have had to like get stuck behind the safety car and lose the race. Yep. So, I mean, it, it's strategical errors for sure. I think they need to start listening to the drivers more, like during the the race. Yeah. Uh, and I also think the drivers need to be a little more aggressive and pushy mm-hmm. with what what they want. Um, and I think that's fair. I right, they, they're the ones who are out front now and. They're the ones who are going to honestly, you know, you hear it with, with Max and you hear it with Lewis, right? It, Lewis will tell them what he wants. Um, 
strongly, which is good. It's the same with Max, right? Max mm-hmm. is he fights back and he tells uh you know Jean Pierre uh, or JP Jesus <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Jean Pierre okay, Lambiasi. He tells yeah, him what yeah. he wants, right? Immediately in the way mm-hmm. he likes it. So yeah, Adam, I mean the, you got to lose all, to, to learn how to yeah. win, but you can't, just you can't do this. You can't do this. You, 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 you cannot let fun. this happen again. And, yeah, and so in the, de- in the debrief, I hope they all said, you know what? That sucked and we're better than that. And next time we're going to get them and here's how. That's what the debrief needs to be. It has to be that way. And, and I also think, Tim, I understand sometimes when, you know, if McLaren are a little bit pushy with their drivers because their drivers are young, like Lando, yeah. You know, I bet there's a lot of people at that team that still see Lando as the guy that came in in 2019 or 2020 when it, you know, when he was a kid. And yeah. I, sh- I think a lot of people still see Oscar as a kid because he is by any other standard. But there are key moments in a team's life where that switches. Now these guys are vets, especially Lando. You know, and Oscar races like a vet. He's just a spectacular talent. You got to start listening. And, and, yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, it's interesting when we move on to, you know, you're looking at McLaren's day and you're like, oh, it's just, I can't believe they did that. You know, as great as it is that Red Bull finished second, they also finished in the back 15. Uh, and I think we have to have a conversation about Sergio Perez again, because we're looking at this and I was, you know, I'm looking up some quotes and stuff. I want to talk about qualifying first. Because we know Max can drive. We know Max had a good day. Um, he, he got more out of the car than perhaps he should have. He was like, maybe we were going to finish fifth or sixth, and they ended up second. Like, good for, that's a championship driver. Sergio yeah. goes off in, in a little bit of wet conditions, uh, but it is driver error in qualifying, specifically Q1. Tim, what happened? Uh, he was warming up his tires. <sighs> and that was it. I mean, oh. I like warming up your tires is uh, like you're not even going flat out. You know, you're not even on a, a push lap at all. You're on like a prep. You're prepping. That, mm-hmm. That's it. So you're like, you're getting ready to bake a cake. That's all you're mm-hmm. doing. Like you're not, you're not even in the oven. Mm-hmm. And goes off and you saw what happened, man. Gets stuck in the gravel and beaches it. I don't even know what he was trying to do, like with trying to get the marshals to push him back onto the track. I mean, you're like, it was, it was over once you beached it. You got to get out of the car. Like it's, it's tough for Sergio Adam. I mean, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. Like it's, yeah. I feel bad for the guy. Like, mm-hmm. it's not like he's, it's not like he's a crap driver. Right. I don't no. think any of these drivers are crap drivers, by the way. Like I've always said that. Like all of these drivers are incredibly talented. It's just a confidence issue for this guy. It's just he, he just doesn't get out of his own way sometimes. And this is what's what's happening. I think, man, the some of the stuff that I would I was speaking with another journalist about this, and you know, he was saying that about performance clauses in his contract, in Sergio's contract, stuff that he had heard, and it's it's not good, man. Like it's. <gasps> Well, so there was some of that le- that leaked this weekend. Remember and- when I told you when he signed that extension? What did I say about performances? You said they better stay up. <laughs> no, no, but what, remember what I said exactly? Basically, I, I had already told everybody like performance clauses. Mm-hmm. They're in there. I basically said it. Yep. And here we are. Like, and it's only taken. What? Four, four or five races? Four, yeah, I was just going to say, like, four races, and we're already having this conversation. Like, this is something that was supposed to happen next year. Like, yeah, we would have yeah. this conversation next year if he was in the same spot. He just hasn't you, been able well, to write the ship. Like, it's- So here's, here's the performance clauses as they stand. I don't know if this sounds familiar to you or if you've heard the same. The rumor is the performance clauses is, are, are as follow. Number one, that he has to be within five driver slots of Max Verstappen, meaning... Right now, he's sixth in the driver standings. He that's would need true. to be fifth. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's you've heard what, that. Yeah, one of the journalists was telling me about that. Yeah. The other rumor is that he needs to be within one hundred points of Max Verstappen. Yeah, that was the other one as well. 
And he is currently, I think, 120 out at Warm War. Now, which that's, means that, like, by the time we get to the summer break, he would. It would have to. Well, he has he, to he, be, he would be pulled out of the car. by Belgium. It yeah, has to be so by summer Vienna break. Spa. Yeah. So we got hung, we got hungry and we got Spa left, don't we? And then yep. summer break. Yep. Yeah. So like this, he's got two races to do that. He can do it. But you know, <laughs> here's the thing: close you know, the people, points like that to to Max. Like, I don't think so, Adam. Well, he put so he put. Um, Sergio didn't even score any points this weekend. Yeah, like, and this is how many weekends in a row of that. And I and I, Tim, here's the thing: like Logan Sargent, people give Logan Sh- Sargent a lot of crap. Logan Sargent has out qualified Sergio seven out of twelve times. Logan Sargent, man. Um, Matt, let's look at the Red Bull Junior team. Let's look at V Carb, Sonoda, Ricardo, both ahead of him this weekend. It doesn't Max. even matter what Sonoda and Ricardo are doing head to head if both of them are ahead of Perez. So Sergio is six in the drivers. Yeah. Max has 255 points. Sergio has 118. And he so has to be within 100. At least 100. So he's got to win both races and hope basically that Max doesn't get points. Man, like, there's no way. Like, I, I'm sorry, but I, I don't. I don't know what happens to him moving forward. I know Liam no. Lawson has a he has a test this weekend. There's sorry, this week. Mm-hmm. Uh Tuesday. Liam Lawson's gonna be in the Red Bull. Mm-hmm. And I believe he has a tire test as well. And they're gonna see see what he's got, right? They're uh see what he's got he's for who be, though. See if he's gonna be right for either team, right? Okay. Just testing him, seeing where he's at. I mean, obviously, the tire test is important for the team as well to get that data. Uh, but it also gives them a picture into where Liam Lawson is. And so uh, this is going to be a big test for him. Um, but it it shows that there could be some pretty big movement at Red Bull. There could be. There could be massive movement where Sergio could be done this year. Like, he could be out of that seat. Like, by the time we get to September... And we could be looking at a different Red Bull driver. Is that it, where we're at? 100%. Wow. 100%. You could have Daniel Ricciardo get moved up to the big seat. You could have Lawson in there. Who knows at this point? Wow. Nobody knows. Not, none of us know. No. But these they're are having that conversation right now, though. Hundred. Yes, they're having the conversation. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, you know, there's been a resurgence from Daniel Ricciardo. It's funny, week to week, we were two weeks ago talking about Helmut Marco going after Daniel saying, well, you know, I don't know if he's a junior team, I don't know if he should be here. And then literally in the week leading up to Silverstone, it was Daniel set to replace Sergio again. Like those headlines were back in. It's crazy how that's all turned. Uh, and week to week, it does in Formula One. But I mean, really, those are those are not outrageous headlines anymore. Mm-hmm. If you're Red Bull, you need to you need to be winning both this year. Mm-hmm. There's no excuse. Mm-hmm. And I think Yuki, and, there, and I think a lot of people will ask him, and I, I think this is important. Why would Red Bull not consider Yuki Sonoda? I don't know. That's a There seems to question. be some they sort could. of resistance I mean, to him. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it, but they're, they're, they could, right? Like, uh, maybe they won't, maybe they will. It, it, I don't know. It could be... I don't even want to speculate on here about it because I just, I don't know. I, okay. I, I really don't. I, um, I, I think he should get a chance. Like if that were to happen, if Sergio were to be removed from the seat, I, you know what I'd like to see? Like a driver shootout for it. Mm. Okay. Like, okay. Get, do, do one of the uh, testing of previous cars. Mm-hmm. With, like what they did with Max in, in Imola a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's a few of the teams aren't happy about, but anyways. Um, <laughs> get get them all together and mm-hmm. just do a shootout. Just whoever's fastest at the end of all of it gets a seat. Right. I, I would, I'd tune in and watch that if they broadcasted it. Like, that'd yeah? be incredible. Like, imagine that. Well, they used to do it back in the day. Like, I remember the, uh, the players team. Yeah. Players team used to do that. They used to do a shootout for their seats. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's I aggressive. Like, yeah, is it the I, most, well, is it the most like realistic way to do it though? Like, you know, are you awesome. not? Yeah. I mean, it'd that's be awesome. the most pressure. Be 
that's the most pressure. Like as a driver, you can go yeah. through that. You can go through anything. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, it'll be it'll be fascinating. They get two weeks to sort of figure some stuff out before Hungary, but we may know. I mean, he may be mathematically out of both of those performances clause by the end of Hungary if things don't turn around. Yeah, big time. He, and he, that's he crazy. Not, yeah, he, like he may not be on the grid in September. Like, <laughs> yeah, that which is wild. And wild. and you know, we all thought it was going to be Logan Sargent, and I think he had a better weekend uh, uh, overall than than a lot of yeah, people were expecting. Had- yeah, I wanted to, I want to talk weekend. a little bit about uh, Aston Martin because they were both in the points today, very quietly so, because it was such an exciting race at the top. Um, what does this mean for them? It seems like there's been a little bit of a turn on their part. Big time. I I think, Adam, some of this is for, like, they were using, I think they, they revert, they had a few newer parts that they brought to the car, but then they also reverted back to a few of the parts that they had used track specifically for Japan and I think that really really helped them a lot like a lot Mm -hmm. of the I don't want to call it old parts because they're not old but previous race parts before Imola we'll just say that because that's when they had the huge upgrade before Mm -hmm. Imola and I think that allowed the car to be a lot more like it increased the drivability of it Mm -hmm. and for both drivers help with the the confidence because uh, I remember Fernando like and Lance talking a lot about how nervous the car has been. Mm-hmm. And I think that new, like <clears throat> these combination of parts that they ran gave them more downforce. But I think at the same time, it like helped the driver and the drivability of the car and the confidence and all that stuff really works well together and all that. But uh, great weekend for them. Uh, I guess to do a factory tour, like I talked about on here, which was, which was awesome. Um, I uh, really excited for the team though. They have uh, big upgrades, I think, coming for the next few races, and we'll see if that turns things around, Adam. Because if it doesn't, I don't know how happy you know either driver is going to be, especially Fernando Alonso. Like, he really wants a, to win. Yeah, like he. I bet. I, uh, you I bet seeing Lewis win today, he was probably like, "Oh man, <laughs> like I just want this so bad." Well, you know, I don't know why though. Like here, these are just my thoughts. It's I don't know anything about this but when you see how fast a team can turn around their car within a season in a few races you start to see why the drivers are getting even more irritated at the end of races and why they're uh, like really looking pissed off because it's right there Like, it's Mm -hmm. not like back in the day when it was like, we're two seconds off. We're not catching anybody for a win. Right, right. We're talking like tense. That's all we're talking about. And I think for some of these drivers, it's it's right there. It's just right there for them. It's within touching distance. Even if they're finishing like P10, P8, P7, P6, it's right there. And I think when you nail an upgrade or you bring the right updates that really help, you can make a huge swing and turn your entire season around within a race. And it's, it's a massive thing. Now, granted, in the constructor standings, I mean, Aston's pretty far out from catching, you know, anyone in fourth place. They're in fifth right now. And I think that's, that may be where they end up for the rest of the season. But, there's no reason why that if if they can bring some stuff that really works, there's no reason why they can't be pushing for podiums. I mean, dude. I mean, having a fifth team pushing for podiums would be amazing this yeah. year. Like, I have to be honest, like, yeah, <laughs> it would just be so cool. That's what the sport should be. By the 100%. way, hundred percent, oh, a million percent. I both drivers were awesome this weekend. I mean, Lance in particular, he was, I mean, very good this weekend mm-hmm. in really, really tough conditions. Again, like Canada, IE Canada, again, tough conditions that wet, damp, dry, didn't put a wheel wrong. Mm-hmm. Didn't make a mistake all race. Very tricky, very, very tricky race. Like he was, yeah, he was great. He did a really great job. Uh, it qualifying Fernando as well. Um, yeah, the, he's, uh, he, he's been really plugged in, man. Like he's, he's looked really good. He has, he has, and it's all happened, like I said, very quietly because of the amount of 
uh, the amount of everything going on at the front, which is great. I mean, it's great for the sport that we're talking about who's racing for victories here rather than who's racing for second or third place. But it is, you know, it's a Formula One curiosity that even finishing, you know, who, who finishes second, third, fourth, and fifth really, really does matter. Matters to fans, it matters mm-hmm. to drivers, matters to teams. Um, you know, and, and in that vein, Ferrari has have lost... Uh, you know, Lando Norris has taken over as second driver, second second to highest points getting driver. Uh, Ferrari are seven or eight points away from McLaren right now, but yeah. you know if they keep racing this way, that gap's going to close quick. Well, the constructors, yeah, the constructors has closed up really nicely, actually. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Red Bull out front with three hundred and seventy three points, Ferrari is three hundred two, and then McLaren is two ninety five. All within striking distance of uh, the Constructors' Championship and and winning that Constructors' Championship. There is a lot of points left on the table, Adam, Mm -hmm. for the rest of the season. I would even factor in Mercedes. They're 221. Let's say they go on, they get hot and they go on a win streak. And, you know, obviously Sergio struggles. And then what happens to Max? Max is going to take an engine penalty at some point as well. Yes, he is. There's going to be a lot of points there left on the table. Um, for these teams, Red Bull is not the fastest team, right? They're just, they're not, I would say there's probably three, four equally fast teams. Maybe not Ferrari right now. They're struggling. We'll talk. Yeah, about they're, they're, it is, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, but three teams for sure. And I think today at this race, Adam, there's probably like what? Five drivers in contention for the win. Yeah. At one point. Like, yep. I mean, that's, that's incredible. I had a track. Like that's as fast as Silverstone, um, where you know downforce is key, and mm-hmm. a lot of these teams have been struggling with that. And we see everybody show up, like really showed up this weekend. It's it's incredible. The rest of the season is going to be bonkers, man. If yeah. if Red Bull hadn't have gotten off to the strong start that they got off at the beginning of the year, dude, we are talking about different drivers battling for this championship yep. and different teams battling for this championship. And this just shows that we're going to have a tight finish for the constructors. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the drivers. I mean, it could be. Mm -hmm. Um, But next season, dude, like. (laughs) Well, and and, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy. And this (laughs) is where, again, Tim, I got to ask, like, like for Ferrari itself, um, what's the uh, um, what's the plan here? You know, what are you trying to accomplish before a break here? Because they got to figure something else out. Yeah, here. they do for sure. You know, and Charles has really got to up his game. I know it's it wasn't necessarily completely his fault, but um, need a little more, I think. Well, I mean, strategy obviously not. I wouldn't put it on Charles, right? It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, box for enters now, and it's like, wait a second, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you boxing that was weird. right that now? Was weird. It's like some of the strategy calls were a little. Uh, uh, wonky, uh, let's call them today yeah. from Ferrari. Uh, you know, I think for them, it's just trying to figure out again, brought a big upgrade. Let's say the one that they brought to Spain didn't really work very well. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you're now mixing and matching components, you know, from previous races to now seeing what works, what doesn't work. And, it's just really got them out of sorts. I don't see this thing getting corrected anytime soon, like within the next three weeks. Like it's, they're going to have to have a huge reset during mm-hmm. the summer break and, and come out swinging for the second half of the season, so you even think, though we're at the halfway mark. So these performances are probably going to continue? I think are so, they a four, yeah. are they a five six are they a seven eight like yeah you know th- th- this is it this is where I think they're at till at least we get to the to, to Dutch Grand Prix for sure that's painful I think so yeah I mean it looks that way like man it's it's been a struggle for them it hasn't been good hasn't no. been good Carlos feel has been feel good, bad though. for Charles oh man feel I, bad I feel for bad for Charles too that's a weird strategy call the inters too early. I got to say, I think Carlos has done really, really well. As much as everybody's yep. annoyed that he's taken so long, he has raced to back it up, yes. right? Like he's sure. he's, he's five, proving that yeah. he's a driver worth waiting for. Yeah, you know? P5 in the race. He's really strong. Uh, yeah. He had a really good race uh, in yeah. really difficult conditions. Uh, 
Adam, shout out to Nico Hulkenberg. <laughs> Come on in sixth place. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, we have a question about him later, so we'll save him. But like, yeah. I just want to throw that in there. Well, we can we can get to the questions right now if you want to. Yeah, sure. I mean, let's do it because I'm we sure got we got a billion of them, dude. We got a lot. It's great. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, let's go with uh, Fiona. Did you see during Lando's Sky interview the cast from the movie uh, doing their media too? So yes. this is the uh, F1 movie. Yep. Um, that they are filming within Formula One while they're going on through the season. Um, I told Adam this on Thursday. I can tell you guys a tiny bit. There's not much I can get into, but uh, got to sit down, speak with the director of the movie. So Joe Kaczynski and mm-hmm. also got to speak with uh, Jerry Bruckheimer. About well, the that's movie. no big deal. I was really cool, man. Super nice guys. Really nice guys. <laughs> just just cool. normal dudes. Just like you could easily sit there and chat with them for like an hour. I had, I just wanted to ask them so many questions. I was just so fascinated by all the things they were telling us. But I think folks are really going to like this movie uh, when it when it comes out. This thing is, trust me, you guys you have no idea what's in store for you with this thing. Like it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. So I know you can't tell us much, but, but you know, I, I think the issue with racing movies in the past, Tim, is they've just been bad. Yeah. They've been bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, with this one, this one, well, I'm not going to say it's not going to be bad. I don't know. <laughs> with, with this one, like with this one, it's, um, they've, what I can say is they've really put a lot of focus into making sure it's authentic as possible when it comes okay. to every aspect of Formula One. So, I mean, you know, you were watching Ford versus Ferrari and, you know, they're downshifting on the middle of the Mulsanne Strait and you're like, <laughs> the hell? <laughs> that's never, that's yeah, that is happen, weird. It's weird. It's right? weird. Or it's like you know, they're looking at each other in the mirror or they're looking at each other through the window and then one of them shifts the gears and it blows by them. I'm like, that that's yeah. not that's not how racing works. Yeah. I wish it I wish that's how racing works. Yeah. It's not how it works. So even the racing I think is gonna be very um a very authentic to, to to racing. So it's gonna I think it's gonna be a really good movie. I think we're in for it. I thought it was hilarious uh, seeing everybody's faces and uh uh, Lando's press agent Sophie was at the dictaphone on Lando and Brad Pitt walks in and she's like, yeah. the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, so good. Cool. And then uh, Fernando Alonso as well. Like, that was, that was hilarious. I don't know if you saw that, but. No, I didn't see the Fernando. Walks one. by Fernando. Fernando turns around and like looks at him, <laughs> stares him down. <laughs> Well, hopefully they can use some of that in the movie. (laughs) No, yeah, I hope so too. I mean, that'd be great. Uh, Yeah. That'd be great. No, it's so, yeah. So that's, uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Nick Ignatov, does it concern you how much Norris's, Norris, Lando Norris gets down on himself for mistakes? Uh, Tim can answer from a driver's perspective and Adam can from the fan side, i.e. reminds me a lot of Jack Campbell with the Leafs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go first, Adam. I'm going to say it doesn't bother me. I think he was, I don't think he was down on himself so much as he was pissed with the team and he was being gracious. Um, I think he said, oh, I've got to make better decisions. He Mm -hmm. means uh, I'm going to make sure they listen to me next time. And Mm -hmm. and that's that's what he really means. But you don't want to go on camera and say, my team really screwed this up. Like, that's not the way to win either. Um, You you're gracious in defeat to obviously to Lewis and then to, you know, you protect your team and then you go behind the scenes with no microphones around and you got, and you grab everybody by the scruff of the neck and go, what the hell was that guys? You really exposed us. Don't ever do that again. And by the way, next time you're listening to me and, and Oscar, same thing, right, Tim. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. No, I mean, it, it's uh it's not concerning. I, I would say, Nick, I, I think Lando's being, uh, team first instead of mm-hmm. absolutely airing his dirty laundry in the media. Mm-hmm. He's playing the team game by what he says. You can see him monitoring what he's saying. And, you know, that's the right thing to do, especially at this moment. It's such a, um, 
such a sensitive moment, right? Where you've got a team that can really blast off into the stratosphere or can just crumble under its own weight. And it's sure. in that, it's in that middle zone there. And so I think, you know, what Lando said is fine. I'm not, I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. I, um, I, I respect the fact that he gets upset. Like I, I, yeah, I would too. And if he wasn't, then I would have concerns. Let's just say that. Um, Brian Wood, was this weekend's qualifying the first time British drivers finished one, two, three? <coughs> Sorry, everybody. I don't think that's probably uh, the case. I don't know the history there. So this is actually... No, this is a great question from Brian. So um, it's the first time three... So it's the first time you had a British drivers one, two, and three qualify one, two, and three at a British Grand Prix since I believe it was 1965. So that goes all the way back to like Brands Hatch as well. That's that. So there you go. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. It, it um, was very cool. It was very cool to see. Oh, yeah, 100%. The whole place was going bonkers. Oh, I, I bet it was nuts. Uh, I can't just, imagine what it was like when Lewis took over. Oh, my too. God. You couldn't even hear yourself think. Like, oh. it, there was so loud. Like, I just, they overpowered the cars and the cars were friggin' loud. It was great. That's oh, my God. Cool. The atmosphere at this track was so cool this weekend. Uh, okay. Lewis asks, what's more worrisome? Ferrari's continued strategy mishaps or McLaren's race, a recent string of strategy mishaps? Oh, uh, Adam, I'm going to say Ferrari. Yeah, I would say Ferrari too. I think McLaren yeah. can recover from that. Ferrari seems to be, this is three or four years of bad strategy. And, and, and also, you can't, your strategy can't be good if your car's not, right? Like how... You know, like it's it's you can't win races if the car is not good enough. That's that's why I feel anyway. Classic Cam asks, "Will Logan Sargent score another F one point?" Uh, I'm going to say yes. I think he I think he does. Um, he's been getting closer and closer. He had a good weekend this weekend. I still, I don't think those cars are totally equal. I'm just going to say that. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, I think Logan will score another point. He's been. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's driven well the last little while here. Jay Money. Oh, we got a serious question from Jay Money. Finally. Let's go. All right. Nico Hulkenberg finishing six back to back weeks. You got to think that Audi has to be happy signing him early in the season with these kind of performances, right? What do you think, Adam? I, I mean, I would think so. <laughs> I, I would think so. Like, listen, if Nico Hulkenberg's still a free agent, you know, or Williams making a play or Alpine making a play. Um, I like that. I mean, I think it makes so much sense for a German driver to go to a German works team and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I think what Nico brings is exactly what they need. They need a guy who is okay, not winning every race, right? That's, that's the Carlos signs holdup. They've given him all the money and all the term and all the, everything that he could want. He's worried about not winning. Nico's not Nico's seen the other side. He was out of the sport and he qualifies well. And he, as we've seen with his two years at Haas, he will also make your car better. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think he regrets it, but you know, I do think it would be a very interesting, uh, you know, I, I don't know if Carlos signs would have as much leeway as he does. Not that Nico and Carlos are the same, but they, you know, Carlos essentially is the marquee driver on the market. Um, and I think there would be a lot more conversations about oh, if we don't get Carlos, we'll get Nico. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, Hassan Salim, we have all seen Ferrari as being inconsistent and Mercedes consistently getting better. History shows the same trend. Uh, <laughs> he says, I might get massacred for this, but did Lewis make the right call in his move to Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he needed a change. Yeah. Right? I th uh, yeah, I think so too. I mean, I don't know, Adam. Let me take a look at, <laughs> you take a look at Listen, the way things have gone lately. <laughs> the way he was driving earlier this year, people were like, well, did, you know, with, with Carlos doing well and Lewis not, people were like, well, did Ferrari make the wrong choice? You know, I think, yeah, I think at point. a certain point you go, okay, I need a change. Yeah. I got two, three years left probably. Yeah. Do I want to race for Ferrari? Or do I not yeah. want to race for Ferrari? If that has yeah. been his dream his whole life, yeah. then Ferrari it is. Do Ferrari. Yeah. You got nothing to prove to anybody. Yeah, hundred percent. Plus, plus, you won again this uh, year. No, I think he's fine with it. That's that's a good answer. Uh, Michael Payne, likelihood Sergio Perez finishes the season in the Red Bull. Uh, what that, do you think? That's a, 
I have no idea. I'm just going to say it's 50-50. Uh, it, it, it really, when you look at just how, uh, just how important it is to score points and what's measuring these drivers now is like hundreds of a second. Everything is so close. You can't have your driver lose their confidence and be that far off of their teammate, especially right now with how close everything is because this is a championship now, constructors, that Red Bull will lose because of what's going on with Sergio and how strong the likes of McLaren, Mercedes are right now. And yeah. don't forget about Ferrari. Like if they're able to turn that ship around, they have two drivers extremely close to each other, can both score points by the handful. So you're now taking points away from Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Right? So Tim, there you go. Tim, Tim has the, has the, is there an argument to be made that Red Bull always had the biggest difference between the two drivers in terms of skill level, but the car hid that? Um, like because back in the day with Sergio? When you, when you or... say all things being equal, like if you have – Sergio was good with, with Force India. People forget. Oh, yeah. Um, him and Esteban were very, very good. Yep. Um, but when you say, okay, him and so Lance let's, look at, let's look at Aston. We got Lance and, and Fernando. Mm-hmm. You got um, uh, then you look at McLaren, Piastri, Norris, and then you got Sainz, Leclerc, mm-hmm. and then you got Hamilton, Russell. Mm-hmm. Who of those drivers that I've just named is, is Sergio Perez better than? Who would you, if if all things were equal and oh, you're a team I... principal, which of which which of those drivers is Sergio being picked over? Right, oh, and it's not because Sergio is yeah. a bad driver. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah. you're saying you're yep. like looking at it like I don't, I don't know. I mean, people will, people will. I already know in the comments will be like, well, Lance, obviously. I'm like, okay, pay attention to the data a little bit, folks. Um, uh, just a little bit. Uh, I think Sergio. I think Red Bull had been looking for a replacement for Daniel Ricardo since Ricardo left. I think Sergio was clean. Easy, no ego, big big sponsorship dollars behind him, and a really solid race track record. And maybe I should have led with that. And oh, Red Bull's got the best car, so it doesn't actually matter. Just put in consistent performances, and you're good. But now that it actually matters, uh, because the, the teams are catching up, I, I feel like Red Bull's really going to feel that skill differential. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, look, it's tough. I mean, uh, the way I look at it is the championship. How bad do you want to win it? How mm-hmm. bad do you want to win the constructors? What are you mm-hmm. prepared to do to do that? Yep. Yep. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. Diana, Next question. Uh, Diana Leifer. Uh, Total Wolf seemed to deliver a throwaway line about keeping this formula and postponing the change in regulations. He winked. How likely is that to happen, given how many teams seem to be competitive lately? Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see that. I didn't. Has that see ever him. happened? No, I I didn't see him doing that, so I can't comment on whether or not he said that because I didn't see it. But I think, like we, it is a conversation that we've all had this weekend in particular about change of regulation and it being maybe a little too soon. When you mm-hmm. consider the racing that we're getting now, and you know, if you change the regulation in 2026, which they are, mm-hmm. uh, we're, we may not see this for a while, like after 2025. Like it could be another two, three more years. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it could be a few more years of pain. So it's like, I, I. I hold out hope that it won't be like that. You know, speaking with James Valls, he makes it seem like um, they don't want that to happen. Like they don't want that regulation. He said the the worry is the engine regulation more yep. so than uh, the car regulation. So right. Ooh. Well, uh, you got two, a season and a half before that happens. Yeah. So let's not let's not worry about it now. I think uh, that's pretty much it for for questions. Um, I guess there's other things we can get into on Thursday, uh, like on the nitty gritty and uh, behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. If you want, yep. Um, Adam, this has been uh, 
It's been a weekend, my friend. Been, it has been, and I know it's <laughs> bedtime for you. So, Tim, uh, it's listen. One in the morning. We're we're looking forward to uh, to getting you back home, and and thank you so much for staying up late. And uh, let's uh, let's have a great couple of uh, a weeks of just speculation and crazy headlines <laughs> out of Europe. I can't wait. Oh my god. Can you imagine the newspapers are going to go bonkers tomorrow. So um, you look sun kissed too, by the way. Sun burnt. I'm sun roasted, my friend. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's when you happens when you forgot to put on sunscreen. And I look at this suntan, farmer's tan. Ready? Oh, dude. Can you see that? Oh, you're gonna have to get the missus to rub you down with aloe vera. Yeah, it's or rough. Something, it's eh? rough. It's just an, I'm just a dummy. Should have put sunscreen on. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. But anyway, uh, Tim, have yeah, yourself a great you- night, my friend. Thanks, Adam. We'll talk to you later, buddy.